everyone, and welcome back to the College Fine YouTube channel. Before we get started today, remember to subscribe to make sure you don't miss any of our videos on college applications or test prep. And if you find this particular video helpful, we would love it if you would click the like button below and share it with your friends on social media so they can get the tips as well. Let's get started talking about UMC. Today we're continuing our series on college admissions, and next on our list is the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. UNC Chapel Hill is one of the top 30 universities in the country, according to the U.S. News & World Report, and it's in the top five public universities. Chapel Hill offers its students amazing opportunities for research and studying abroad. It was the first public university in the entire nation and consistently has more Rhodes Scholars than any other public research university. It not only offers these great opportunities for students, but it's also known for its beautiful natural surroundings and charming small town atmosphere in the Raleigh-Durham area in North Carolina. UNC Chapel Hill offers more than 70 majors and minors, ranging all the way from real estate to speech and hearing sciences. UNC's dynamic academic program provides Tar Heels the opportunities to study subjects that are not always offered at other colleges. Though first-year students may only apply to the College of Arts and Sciences, upon completing just one year of study, Students may also apply to the undergraduate programs of UNC Chapel Hill's graduate schools, such as the Keenan Flagler School of Business, which is a top regarded business school in the country. Given all these advantages, it comes as no surprise that admissions at UNC Chapel Hill are selective. Only 21.9% of applicants were admitted in 2019, and that acceptance rate has been falling steadily in recent years. It's important to note, though, that if you are a resident of North Carolina, your chances of getting in are much better. UNC Chapel Hill considers state residency as a very important factor in their admissions process, and last year they accepted over 40% of in-state applicants. Still, if you're a strong student with ambitions to study at Chapel Hill, resident or non-resident for North Carolina, we can help. We're going to teach you in this video how to optimize your UNC Chapel Hill application. Let's dive right in. First of all, if you're planning to apply to UNC Chapel Hill, you should know what exactly that application consists of and what your timeline options are. So you can apply to UNC Chapel Hill using the common application. We've already written an extensive guide with everything you need to know about applying via the common app. So be sure to read that post, the user's guide to the common app, which we linked in the comments below this video. Students applying to UNC Chapel Hill can choose between two admissions timeline options. Early action applications are due by October 15th, or regular decision applications are due by January 15th. If you're unsure about whether you should apply early, check out our post early action versus early decision versus restricted early action, so many options, also linked in the comments below this video. When you submit your common application, you wanna be sure to also submit the following supplementary materials. Number one, the supplemental essay and short responses for UNC Chapel Hill. Number two, your SAT or ACT scores with or without writing. Number three, one academic teacher recommendation. Number four, a secondary school statement or a school report. Number five, your high school transcripts. And number six, an $85 application fee or a fee waiver. You should also note that while not required, SAT subject test scores will be considered if you submit them. If you've done well on any of your SAT subject tests, particularly those in your areas of interest for a potential major, you wanna make sure that you do send along those official score reports to supplement your application. So now that you know what you can submit to support your application to UNC Chapel Hill, let's talk about just how the admissions committee is going to evaluate all of those pieces of information. UNC Chapel Hill practices holistic admissions, which means that it aims to select students based not just on their test scores and grades, but also on talents, personal characteristics, activities, recommendations, all of those pieces. Specifically, UNC Chapel Hill notes that the following areas are very important to the admissions process. Those are the rigor of your secondary school record, your standardized test scores, your application essay, your recommendation or recommendations, plural, your extracurricular activities, your talents or abilities, your character and your personal qualities, and lastly, that state residency piece that we talked about earlier. As you can see, many different aspects of your application to UNC Chapel Hill will be reviewed, and your application will be looked at from several different points of view. Let's take a closer look at what exactly UNC Chapel Hill wants to see in all these different areas. First of all, let's talk about academics. Students who are accepted to UNC Chapel Hill are typically those who took challenging courses in high school and they did well in those challenging courses. Generally speaking, your overall academic profile is probably the most important part of your college application, and this holds true at UNC Chapel Hill, where you can expect your academics to make up about 30% of an admissions decision, which holds true for most selective colleges and universities. 
keep in mind that that 30% includes not only your grades, but also the rigor of your high school classes. So that means you should push yourself to take honors and AP classes. Schools like UNC Chapel Hill would rather see an A- in AP US history than an A in the regular placement history class. Last year, 78% of the admitted students were in the top 10 of their high school class, and over 96% of admitted students had a high school GPA of 3.75 or above. Good grades alone aren't quite enough, though. You need to back them up with solid performance on standardized tests. Last year, the middle 50% of admitted students to UNC Chapel Hill earned SAT scores of 1280 to 1470, or ACT scores of 29 to 33. Next up, let's take a look at extracurricular activities. It's also an area that can provide insight into your talents and personal qualities, and these activities typically make up about a quarter of your admissions decision. The admissions officers at UNC Chapel Hill don't care what kinds of activities you did, as much as they care that you pursue them with passion and with excellence. That could mean taking on a leadership position at an organization, starting a whole new organization or initiative, or being recognized for your talents through awards and recognition in your particular area. Whatever you do, you wanna show why those activities were meaningful to you and how you went above and beyond in being passionate about them. It can be helpful to frame your thinking around your extracurricular activities using a tier system like we do here at College Vine. Our tier system helps us to rate extracurriculars on four tiers according to impressiveness. Tier 1 activities are the most impressive to college admissions officers, but they're also quite rare. The average applicant is unlikely to participate in many Tier 1 activities, and most will participate in none at all. Representing exceptional accomplishments or leadership, these activities make a really strong impression on an admissions committee just because they aren't seen very frequently. These Tier 1 activities could include, for example, winning a role in a major motion picture or being a nationally ranked athlete, so pretty rare things. The second most impressive extracurriculars fall into Tier 2. To qualify for Tier 2, an activity must allow students to showcase their leadership. Examples include chairing a committee for the National Honor Society or serving as the editor-in-chief of your school newspaper, for example. Students who aren't club leaders can earn Tier 3 status if they receive other recognition or awards in a given activity. Tier 3 extracurriculars could include, say, being the treasurer of a club or winning an award for playing the violin. And then lastly, Tier 4 activities are the most common and do tend to make a less significant impression on admissions officers because they are so common. These could be something like participating in debates or playing JV soccer. Those are Tier 4 activities, and although they aren't as prestigious as those in Tiers 3, 2, or 1, they can still provide colleges with valuable information about who you are as a person based on how you spent your time in high school. To get into UNC Chapel Hill, you should aim to present at least one Tier 1 or Tier 2 activity and then back that up with several Tier 3 or Tier 4 activities. Let's talk now about your essays. These will typically make up another 25 to 30 percent of your admissions decision. That's because they're one of the only places on the application where the admissions officers have a chance to really understand who you are as a person beyond your grades, your classes, your test scores, your extracurriculars. In your essay, you can impress admissions officers with unique character and voice, and you can give more context about your specific achievements, talents, passions, or maybe interest in UNC. Here are a few tips that we at College Find think can help to strengthen any college essay. Number one is to paint a picture. This is a phrase that English teachers may have drilled into your head already, but it's especially true for your college essay. Painting a picture of your accomplishments through examples and unique rhetorical devices helps admissions committees to visualize the steps you've taken to get where you are today and who you are as a person and who you strive to be as a person in the future. Try to think of ways that you can show rather than tell. So for instance, if you're a pianist, you might use imagery to describe the progression of your musical development, initially exploring playing one note at a time to learning how to play the complicated music that you play today. You could evoke specific sounds and melodies to illustrate this development, and that would be a creative way to show rather than tell. Tip number two is to use action-oriented verbs. Rather than relying on soft adjectives, use action verbs like implemented, facilitated, and so on. Those types of words are much more powerful in an essay. They also emphasize your ownership of your achievements, signifying that the achievements didn't just happen to you, you actually made them happen. For example, rather than saying that you were responsible for speaking on behalf of the student body as the student council president at your school, you might say something like, I took advantage of this opportunity to speak for our school as a whole. In doing so, I raised awareness of the issues pertaining to inclusivity in our community and then implemented a formal procedure for addressing student concerns. Tip number three 
is to tell a story. Like any good story, your essay should have a narrative arc. Instead of being simply a list of achievements, it should portray an experience that actually really shaped you as a person. No matter what topic you choose, you should be able to tell an account that captures your reader's attention and has all of the hallmarks of a compelling narrative, a good story. For instance, if you're a first-generation college student, you might begin your essay by describing a specific moment in your childhood when you realized that you might just be the first member of your family to attend college. Then you might narrate other specific events along your journey and development, such as key encouragement from parents or teachers, difficulties you faced and how you overcame them, and then how you finally reached this moment here today and are excited about the next chapter in college, hopefully at UNC Chapel Hill. That's much more effective than simply stating, I'm a first generation college student and here are all the reasons why attending college is important to me. If you can't weave together a compelling story with the specific topic you've chosen, you might actually want to rethink the topic you chose. Spend some time brainstorming to hone your topic and ensure that it's one that will both capture your audience and showcase those accomplishments with a quality narrative arc. For more help with your essays and supplemental essays for UNC Chapel Hill, make sure you head over to the College Vine blog and particularly check out our post, How to Write the UNC Chapel Hill Essays 2019 through 2020. That's one that we're gonna link in the comments below this video. And now the final piece of your application is to consider your letter of recommendation. UNC Chapel Hill requests only one letter from an academic teacher. So we recommend that you choose that single recommender very carefully. Great college recommendation letters give an admissions committee additional information about your high school achievements, but they also offer a sense of who you are as a person and how you go about achieving your goals. You may have noticed that who you are as a person is a key theme of your college application. You may be tempted to choose a recommender who taught you in your strongest subject area. And while that's not necessarily a bad approach, you should also think of the teacher who can best speak to your character and your ability to persevere and overcome obstacles. A teacher who has known you for a long time and has interacted with you in multiple capacities, like not only your English teacher, but also your soccer coach or your quiz bowl advisor, that person will be better able to describe who you are. Sometimes it's even a good choice to choose a teacher whose class you initially struggled in, particularly if you worked closely with that teacher to improve your performance and ultimately succeeded through that collaboration and hard work. Regardless of which teacher you choose, try to request a letter during the spring semester of your junior year. At that point, next year's applications will not be online yet, but at least that teacher can get started thinking about what they want to say in your letter of recommendation, and they'll have the whole summer to put together an awesome draft. The majority of your classmates aren't going to be requesting their letters until the fall, so if you get a leg up in the spring, your recommender will have more time to focus on you specifically, which is obviously advantageous to you. At the very least, though, remember to ask at least one month before your first deadline to be courteous to your recommender. Some teachers may ask you to provide them with a brag sheet, which is basically a resume of your activities and honors. Your counselor might also ask you for one to write other recommendations, so it's a good thing to have ready when you enter the admissions process. Finally, if you're really truly set on attending UNC Chapel Hill, you should know that you may be able to increase your chances at admissions by applying by the early action deadline of October 15th. While Chapel Hill does not release specific data regarding acceptance rates for early action, by applying earlier, you definitely indicate your strong interest in attending UNC Chapel Hill, and by doing so, you make yourself a more appealing applicant. That's it for today. For more information about getting into selective colleges and universities like UNC Chapel Hill, check out all of the blog posts linked in the comments below this video. Or for more general guidance on applying to college, visit us online. Thanks as always for visiting us here at the College Run YouTube channel. And if you're applying to UNC Chapel Hill this season, best of luck.